is High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. Back here on the program, Lynn Burke filling in for the coach, Ed Young, who had an unfortunate passing this week with his mom. We thank Lynn for stepping in this morning on this final Saturday before Christmas on ESPN Radio 94.1. It is High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Don't forget later on today here on ESPN Radio 94.1 at 1.30 we have college basketball. Old Dominion plays host to Morgan State. That's 1.30 coming your way. And then we have an NFL double dip tonight courtesy of our friends at Westwood One. Washington at Tennessee, the Redskins and the Titans. And then Baltimore, the Ravens at the Chargers from Los Angeles. Lynn, who are you going with those games? you going with the two home teams, Titans and Chargers? Depends who's playing quarterback for Washington. Their eighth or ninth starting quarterback of the year. I heard, it's crazy. I heard they were going to audition you for that spot. You don't want that job? Uh, no. You'll pass. All right. At this time, we have a special guest with us. He is the head basketball coach of the Kellum Knights in Virginia Beach. Six and one overall on the season. Six wins, one loss, five game winning streak. Red Hot, a team to watch out for in the Beach District in Class 6. We say good morning and happy holidays to Coach Norman Hassel out there. Coach, how you been? Good. Hey, Matt, how you guys doing? Happy holidays, you guys. Thanks uh, for having me. No doubt. Thank you for coming on the program this morning with us. Just got done with practice, right? Literally, when I say just done, seconds ago. <laughs> so the sweat is still, it, you still got it on your forehead, right? And my back and my fat stomach. <laughs> well, I don't know about all that. But uh, tell us about this team here. You're 6-1 and one on the season. Before we get to some of the key names and what's on the horizon for the Kellum Knights, uh, are you where you want to be? Are you a little ahead, a little behind? Give me, as a coaching staff, what, what you're talking about amongst the, with the guys of, of your assessment here. At, you're really about one-third of the way through the season here. Yeah, one-third of the way. I mean, I, you can, as a coach, you can't be upset with 6-1. and one. I wanted to be 7-0 and oh, like any coach would want to be. Um, we lost by six to Green Run on a night where I thought we were playing well enough to win. So that kind of sticks with me. So um, kind of where we want to be. Acceptable for now. How about that? Yeah, acceptable's uh, good enough here. Let's get into some of the, the names to watch for you here with, with the Knights. I know it begins with Josh Talbert, who was a returning uh, second-team All-State performer, uh, beach, all-beach, all-region. I mean, to me, he's one of the best senior guards in the area who hasn't signed or committed anywhere, and whoever gets him is getting a good basketball player. Yeah, and it just amazes me. I mean, you got a guy of his caliber with his athleticism, the way he can shoot the ball, the way he defends. And there are people with lesser caliber with scholarship offers, and I'll never be able to figure that out. But that's for all these wise college coaches around here to figure out. I don't know what they're looking for. I don't know what they want. The kid carries a 3-8, top-notch classes, great kid. I I don't know what else they need him to do, but Josh is going to play basketball until it happens, and that's how we roll. Yeah, he's definitely got a chance to play at the next level for sure, and – um. He's been a catalyst for your team. And it's funny, the last few years, even going back to that Trey Freeman, Ramon Snowden team, you've been knocking on that state tournament door. How hungry have the guys been this offseason to say, all right, we're going to make that history this year and be that team that gets through? I'm sorry, repeat the question? I said, you know, you've been knocking on that state tournament door, Coach, even going back to the Trey Freeman, Ramon Snowden years where it seems like four or five times you've been at one win away from that state tournament. How hungry has, has Josh and the rest of the guys been to be that team that breaks through and gets to the state playoffs this year? Well, we're always that hungry. We're always that hungry. And, you know, a, wide, a guy here that, that, that I work with, our, our head custodian said, I tell you one thing's a fact. You keep kicking on that door and eventually it'll pop open. <laughs> so we're just going to take a big old boot and keep kicking it. It'll pop open. Looking at some other key play, pieces for you. Uh, I know inside for you, Mason Makovic, sophomore's got a lot of talent for you. Tell us more about him and some other parts around Josh for you on the squad. Uh, Mason is doing real well for us. Um, started off slow, then he recorded three double doubles in a row. Even had, even though he didn't have double point scoring the other night, he did have eleven rebounds. So he's becoming who we thought he could be. He's only a sophomore, so we really enjoy that. Then we have uh, Kobe Moore. Um, you know, we're, I'm an analytics guy over here, so we have this great program that gives us all these numbers. 
and they give us plus minuses for every player, plus minuses of what we are when each particular player is in the game. Oh, nice. And Kobe leads us in the plus minus for every single game except for the last two. So he had a double-double the other day at 15 and 13. He could shoot the ball. And um, Michael McNeil has been a big surprise for us. He's the, um, the one that came up from JV last year. People yes. don't know a lot about him. He had 16 um, Thursday night and um, against PA. I think he had 16 or 17. Mike can score. Um, people think that it's Josh has to handle the ball. We're in trouble. We're not. Mike handles the ball, gets to the hole, distributes to his teammates. Um, we, we've got pieces, so I know a lot of people, we've already seen some boxes and ones, and we've got plans for that. But if you think you're just going to stop Talbert, first of all, good luck with that. But if you think you're just going to stop him and then we're just going to fall apart, that's just not the case. If I'm not mistaken, Mason comes from some pretty good stock, the grandson of Jack Ankerson, the longtime sports figure here in this area. That's correct. Yeah. He does come from great stock. I think his dad played linebacker at Wake Forest, and his mom – was a volleyball All American at Catawba, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so uh, good genes there. Oh, soccer, with soccer, not volleyball. Sorry, soccer. Thank yes. And uh, looking at the, the, this team, you know, you're, when people play Kellum, it's always frustrating from what other coaches say because of the way you guys control tempo and the discipline you play with. How difficult is it to get them to buy into the system that that you guys run? And what's kind of the biggest key from day one and getting them ingrained to what you do? It's not really the buy-in. They always buy in. It's the discipline to do it. So thank God you weren't at our practice today or you would have understood what I was talking about, <laughs> discipline. But you just have to see it's easy to do when no one's looking. We're 5 on 0, but extremely difficult to do when certain teams and defenses throw different pressures at you. And that's why we always say when we say play hard, part of that means playing smart. I know my kids are going to go hard. I know they're going to work hard. We got one of the toughest teams. You know, we got um, Damian Mazel comes over from football. Kobe Rosser um, comes over. And those two guys just bring this great element of toughness. So this is one of the tougher teams I've ever had. And it's a hard-working team. But we're so young. I feel like every year I get younger. I don't know how that keeps happening. But, <laughs> Which is you're getting older. That's what it is. Yeah, that, maybe that's what it is. But uh, we, we're so young, a lot of kids haven't had to be as disciplined for long periods of time. So we just got to stick to the discipline. Like even when we played Green Run, I thought we were great, and there was about three or four game minutes where we just weren't disciplined. And they just, you know, Green Run's a very good team. They took advantage of that and won the game. So we just got to stay disciplined. Right now, would you consider your team a better defensive team or better offensive team? Defensive team. We're probably better defensively. There's a couple things we could do to confuse teams, and um, our on-ball defense has gotten a much better, but, you know, our five defense, our zone defense, and our man-to-man -man defense have really gotten better. And I know a lot of teams we play really don't have much structure, and they look at us and say, well, you know, I'm just going to take this kid one-on-one. -on -one. And it's, it's becoming more difficult to do that. And if you do, we've got rotations to make. Our man looks like a zone because we've got rotations out of it. We try to do what we do out of that. So I think my defense is better. We're chatting right. with Kellum head basketball coach Norman Hassel. His night 6-1 and one on the campaign, five-game winning streak as well. It's High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1 as we talk to you on this final Saturday before Christmas. And uh, Coach Hassel always having the Kellum Knights in contention, Lynn, as they come into this year now. They have had nine, looks like it's going to be ten consecutive winning seasons for the Knights as he's closing in on career win number 200 with the Kellum Knights there in Virginia Beach. Coach, what's the biggest surprise either with the team in general or individual for you here at the one-third way? Um, Michael McNeil has pleasantly surprised me. Um, I, he just was untested. I know he can play. So the way he plays does not surprise me. But I didn't know what he would do uncontested. And then, you know, other than Josh, you know, Kobe played some minutes last year. Mason came off the bench, but it was here and there. Noah Reedy came off and provided some minutes here and there. So the best surprise right now is how some of these guys who have just been role players off the bench have come in and learned how to be depended upon. And they're kind of holding that down a little bit. And now there's new guys that come off the bench. Um, sometimes I call them my dog group. I could throw in Kobe Rosser and Dane Mazel and Ralph. Hammond and 
Connor Capozzi, and who's my fourth guy? I'm missing somebody. And, um, and Jimmy, and Jimmy Thomas. And those guys are, I mean, when I call them dogs, I mean it. It's a smaller group, but they give my starters problems in practice. I mean, they get after them. They steal the ball. They're in their chest. So it helps us in practice to get ready for teams that play that style of basketball. So I've been surprised at how deep we could go, as soon as I can trust that, <laughs> and um, how tough we are. One one thing about the Knights, when you watch them play basketball, they're always sharing the basketball, playing unselfishly, making the extra pass, going back to the Trey Freeman days, and now with Josh Talbert and company, and even Coach Hassel getting an assist during this segment. Give us the assistant coaches that help you out on a daily basis as well that keep you on the straight and narrow. I call them my right hand and my left hand. That's uh, Thomas Diatley and Reggie McMillan. Those are everybody's got a guy, and those are my guys. Cannot function without these two guys. We talk about everything. I listen to everything they say, and half the time I kind of roll with what they roll. They are right into it, as animated as I am, except for on game day. Then I take over all the animation. <laughs> but um. These guys are my guys, man. They come in. when We put in a new play today that Diatley brought to the table. Reggie's that young, fire guy, you know, played uh, under Jack Baker at Maury, and he can come in and light a fire. He can still play. He'll let these guys know, you can't even guard me. How are you trying to win a game, you know? So I, I got exactly <laughs> what I need. Two young guys. I'm getting old. They can go out. All I can do is fuss and act ignorant, but these guys can get on the court and still do their stuff. And Reggie also a guy's pretty good at trivia. He's won a couple of Virginia Preps Classic shirts, yeah. Lynn. Do I ever give him his T-shirt, man? <laughs> I don't know. We, we probably own three more at this point, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, Class 6 is, is, is so strong this year. It looks like with Granby, Oscar Smith, Western Branch, Lansdowne, Cox, others. What, what's it look like down the road come tournament time? It looks like you're going to have to beat somebody. You know, we used to try to get our schedule set, weigh the competition that we're going to play. But like you just said, you name all those teams, all of which are really good teams, you're not getting out of here unless you beat somebody noteworthy. So it doesn't matter what you do during the regular season. It doesn't matter how you plot and scheme. There's going to be a game that's going to come down to it, and it's going to be a really good team, and you're going to have to beat No matter whether you're one through eight, you just have to get in, and then you have to get your two games. That's how it goes. Well, Matt, now is asking me to ask you the toughest question of anything we're going to ask you today. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Jeez, I don't know. See how tough it is. Yeah. It is a tough one. sports all? Is it still football and basketball on? Who's got time for a movie? <laughs> A Christmas story, probably. Oh, there we go. That's mine, Coach. Yeah. We well, can watch that one together. I love that. Don't hey, don't poke your eye out, kid. Oh, <laughs> uh, you two thinking alike, I swear. Uh, well, Coach, thank you so much for the time uh, this morning. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in action here real soon. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year, and we'll catch up soon, all right? All right thanks thanks for having me, guys. Have a good holiday. You got it. That is Norman Hassel, head basketball coach of the Kellum Knights, with us this morning on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com. He made my day with the Christmas story. It's, it's so funny we're talking you know talking basketball these the coaches uh-huh. their, their mindsets talking basketball this then we hit him with christmas movie and it just kind of kind of floors them tell you what they got a good team i mean josh yeah. talbert's playing terrific they got some inside guys with colby moore and mason mckovic and michael mcneil's been a surprise for them in the guard spot they're one of those teams and i say this every year with with the, and i've been saying it with region 5a with how loaded that's been for years with the likes of maury and norview and green run and hampton and bethel was good in that picture for a long while salem came out of nowhere and won the region as an eight seed but this year we're in class six there's going to be like seven legitimate championship caliber teams and I think Kellum's one of them if you put them in five four three they could easily breeze through but somebody's gonna it's gonna be an absolute war and who knows they could be one of the last teams standing I mean I could make a case for any one of the six or seven that's in that conversation of Kellum Cox Granby Oscar Smith Western Branch and I still think Lance Towns is a favorite despite losing to Cox this week but they could certainly win it or go out in the first round you know I think it's we're still what a month and a half away or something like that yeah. from the postseason but boy it sure is going to be fun yeah, it's going to make those those class six matchups a lot of fun too. When you know the Lansdowne, the Cox, the Kellum get together, and then Oscar Smith and Western Branch meet a second time. And oh, by the way, Granby has not lost since the Eastern District tournament. They've been red hot. And with so many class six schools in the Beach District, you know when they play each other, they're they're 
not only jockeying to win the game, they're jockeying for the, the playoff seating. Well. Yes, very true. One more segment on this final Saturday before Christmas for 2018 on High School Sports Talk with Lynn Burke, Matt Hatfield as well, Thomas Simmons, other side of the glass. Give us a call if you want to. you got a few minutes at 757-687-9494 on Lynn Burke's favorite radio station. It's ESPN Radio 94.1.